Build Show is on the road today. We're in Bastrop, Texas. We're about to visit my buddy, Scott True. If you saw my last video with Scott, he is a really smart builder that does things on an incredibly low price point. So we got a lot to learn from Scott. The last video we made killed it and it was really long. And I got a, got a bunch of comments from y'all saying, hey, I don't mind the long format. So buckle up, we got a great video for you. Scott True and some awesome details. Let's get going. Hey, there he is. What's up, Scott? How are you doing? Good to see you, brother. Good to see you. Man, Scott, the last time I visited you, you showed me some awesome details at some honestly really low price points with high performance. I suspect you got a couple things over here to show me as well. That's right. <laughs> got a few things. <laughs> so what are we looking at? What is this house? Okay, so this is my house. Okay. We have really kind of a, a mix of, you're going to see some budget things here. Yep. But I've got some things I'm going kind of above and beyond. Um, so it's kind of a mix of, of stuff going on. I like what I'm oh. seeing so far. I'm seeing that you've got a really nice detail of some tape from your foundation to your zip sheathing. Right, so um, this is the, the SIGA tape that we normally use. Mm -hmm. um, I usually top it off with the zip tape. I feel better about that being a, a terminating edge there. Yeah, because the zip's made to stick to zip, right? Right. And then I'm noticing already, like on these windows, I love that you've done zip all the way in, zip tape that is. Mm -hmm. But I'm noticing that instead of stretch tape across the whole bottom, you're just doing it on that corner. Is that because that tape's a more expensive tape? You're kind of um, uh, being budget conscious about using more expensive tape? Yes, that is, that's how that started. Um, because yeah, exactly. The guys would use stretch tape all the way across. Mm -hmm. And it would, this was actually a recommendation from a framer. Oh, really? He said, why don't I just put it in the corner? And I said, yeah, that sounds good. Makes sense. Um, now this is, this is more standard here because this is the garage wall, which is not taking exterior insulation. Okay. So this, that's why it looks a little bit more standard. But um, yeah, you've seen, you know, your, your viewers are, have seen this before. Um, I go all the way around primarily for air because when eventually when I caulk the back side of the window, it's mm -hmm. caulked to this tape, which that's is right. tied to the sheathing. So it's an unbroken air barrier. Yeah. Continuity of air barrier, really smart. But you're not doing exterior insulation here, which makes sense. It's right. just your garage on the other side. But then I'm guessing because I'm seeing some window bucks coming out that you've got some exterior insulation going on over here. What's, what's the plan? So we're planning on uh, two inches of poly iso. Okay. Um, I've actually got one inch sheets because I'm planning to stagger the seams. Um, but that's why we kind of have what looks like a brick ledge. Ah. It's really just so that the siding isn't sticking out so far when we go to finish the slab. Oh, that's a smart detail. I like um, that. And yeah, this is not complete yet. This is just, we've got some tape here to take, to kind of cover the bulk of what's going on here. Yep. But then we're going back and we're doing some liquid flash detailing um, to, oh, you know, to, to seal up like that spot. Yeah, and to seal this corner right here. Right, exactly. In the inside it's corners. Really, in a lot of ways, similar to what I did in my house too, where I did exterior insulation at two inches rather than zip R, let's say. Mm -hmm. I'm just curious, did you do the math on zip <clears throat> R as a material cost versus so, standard zip and then poly ISO? I did the math a while ago, um, but you know, these prices shift all the time. Yeah, lumber's so gone crazy. So it's hard to stay on top. I mean, right now zip sheathing is super cheap, which is awesome. I <laughs> called the other day, a builder's first source told me it was $22 a sheet. Yeah. And it wasn't that long yeah. ago, it was more I than mean, double that cost. Really at that price, there's no reason not to use it. I mean, yeah, you're crazy not to. Uh, but yeah, I had, do I had done the math a while ago. At the time when I did the math, it didn't make sense. It was cheaper to just use the exterior poly ISO separately. Mm -hmm. That's also more in alignment with the perfect wall concept. Yeah, that's right. Um, because it's truly on the outside. Yeah, and then everything now, behind there is warm. What, what happened is later, um, I redid the math and found out that there's probably not a whole lot of a difference if I would have gotten the zip R. Hmm. So I had done the manual J already and, and planned the HVAC system and everything 
with that two inches considered. So mm -hmm. switching to zip R would mean that I would need to Redo go your manual with, day. well, not necessarily, but just make sure that I'm doing the equivalent oh, of okay. the two inches. Now, when you get in the two inch zip R, um, I started reading because I wanted to make sure the guys were gonna fasten it well. <laughs> um, you've gotta be perfect yeah. in order to get that yeah. shear strength. Yeah. And, and I know, I, I thought, you know, we're not gonna be that perfect. Um, it would take a lot. I and, like how standard this and is. And I thought, okay, well maybe I can do the wind bracing with strapping or whatever. Uh -huh. um, but then that's gonna require I call the engineer and ask him for help. Yeah. And you know, after considering all those things, I'm uh, I just stuck with the plan of I like it. Exterior insulation. I like it. Now this it looks something like there's something going on here. <laughs> this is the Arlington inbox, right? Right. Which I love compared to those crappy looking bubble covers that most builders use. Um, what's happening here, Scott? This okay. is different than what I've seen before. So if you've seen these boxes before, I'm sure your viewers have seen them. They come with the flange, yep. which is awesome. because I love that flange because when you have a flange, you can properly flash something. Yep. Um, but in this case, the box is all the way outside. Yeah. So we're flashing Smart. it differently. So in other words, you're not penetrating with the back of this box your zip. You're mm -hmm. actually putting the box right on top of the zip. And then where your wire comes out, I'm guessing you've done some... That's, it's just a one small hole. And in this case, we actually used liquid flash and tape to go around those wires just to make sure it was kind of, you know, thoroughly covered. Gotcha. Uh, plus I had some guys that had never done this before. So mm -hmm. I was just making sure they... They got it right. They got it right, yep. And now yeah. the wires are sealed from an air and water perspective. And then all you had to do was make sure if water were to get back to the zip, you could make sure that's water and, and really watertight exactly. more than airtight. And so Scott right. did a nice job of taping in a shingle fashion, starting at the bottom, next piece of tape, top piece, and then for a little extra, uh, you know, belt and suspenders, a little bead of liquid flash, right? I had my, yep, right. I had my trim carpenter here uh, helping out. Surprisingly, these flanges actually break off pretty easily. Yeah, they really? Okay. So it's handy. And then he took a little planer, like one swipe, and that took the rough edge off. And then your finished siding is going to be what, a half inch or Pro so? Probably that about flange. a half inch behind that. But that looks good to me. Yeah, it looks totally it's good. It's really just going to be like, at that point, like an accent, accent you know. No one's um, going to think twice about right. that. Way to take an off the shelf product and make it work for your build. I like that. And also shows that uh, you made a mock-up. Uh, okay. Airtight house, <laughs> but this is not a great airtight detail. What's going on here, Scott? Right, here you're gonna see a, this big gaping hole. Um, but this obviously, this is, this is what I tell the electricians to do because I don't, I don't wanna ask them to do anything special that it's, they won't. Um, but I do have a unique way of handling this. Um, so I just want to say, follow me on Instagram at Scott True Builds, and uh, I'm going to show exactly how I deal with that. Shameless plug to go follow Scott <laughs> right there at Scott True Builds on Instagram. Follow him, and he's going to show it on there. I like it. Now, Scott, I'm also seeing something different that I haven't seen you do in the past. Last time I was here, you showed me that inexpensive soffit detail. Uh, what are you doing here? What's going on here? So um, I guess this is what uh, uh, on your channel I've seen it called the cock and block method. Yep. Yep. Um, Doug Cameron uh, right. kind of introduced me to that years ago. Um, and so yeah, that's what we're doing here. It's it's a little bit closer to Monopoly, not quite Monopoly. Yeah, it's but, close though. And tell me if I'm wrong. These are your roof rafters, mm -hmm. not a not a special add-on tail. So that's that's your structural rafter right. coming through. And then you had your framers tooth the, uh, you mm -hmm. know, cut some notches in the top of this uh, zip piece, which is actually on the top there, slide it up, and they didn't need to be perfect either because you came in with some Prosico uh, joint and seam filler, right. which is that pink uh, fluid applied you see there. And the beauty of that joint and seam filler compared to uh, Huber's liquid flash is there's a fibrous material in there, mm -hmm. and you can span a bigger gap, no problem. Right. Did I, uh, did I guess right on that? Yeah, that's exactly right. And so, uh, now I will say that I'm not using zip sheathing on the roof decking. I'm using um, 5.8 OSB. Sure. Um, 
but I'm confident that it's going to be airtight. What we do is we tape the seams of it. Mm. And I'm mentioning that because it's important as we talk about this detail, how it all ties in. Yeah. Right. So it's, it's five eight zip. Um, I used it a little bit thicker and I've got rafter 16 inch on center because I don't want to see any sag. Wait a minute. You said five eight uh, zip on the roof or five eight OSB? Uh, sorry. OSB. 5 OSB. <laughs> okay, just, just verify, because we got some drone footage we're going to lace in as we're talking about right. this. Right, well, you'll just see the black underlayment on it right now. Okay, gotcha. Um, but yeah, with that being taped, um, and then this wall being cocked to it, uh, no, that's, what, that's what completes the air barrier. And so what tape are you using on top of that OSB? Zip tape. Or, zip tape, okay. And it's been sticking good for you? Yes. Awesome. Yep. Fantastic. And then just a standard underlayment on it's top a, of that and then your roof. Yep. It's a synthetic underlayment. And then we're, in this case, we're going to have a metal roof. Okay. Awesome. Yep. Anything else you want to show me out here? Should we go inside? Well, um, just real quick while we're talking about air barriers. Um, I mean, I build a tight house. Uh, almost every house we build is tight, even the, the cheaper spec homes. Um, and I just like to think of it in three, in three things. It's um, framing to slab connection, mm -hmm. wall to roof connection, yep. and then the holes that you poke through. Yeah. I mean, it's that yeah. simple. If you kind of think in, in those three, and when I say hole, I'm talking about pipes, wires, windows, doors, anything that's a Any hole. hole. Yep. And um, I mean, there's so many ways to air seal. For sure. Just pick one, and but be thorough. Yeah. And I have found that um, just by simply being thorough and making sure you get everything. Yep. And you can't not build tight. <laughs> and I want to compare what you've done here, Scott, to standard construction. You know, standard construction where that wall framing meets the concrete slab, about the only thing that is typical is to see a capillary break, which is that crappy foam uh, sill sealer product, mm -hmm. which I found out as a young builder does not air seal very well at all. Because right. <laughs> I had a client at one point that said, oh, I don't want to do base in my living room. And so we omitted it. We basically had a drywall uh, detail in a real modern house. And I got a call from them a month after they moved in. I got this breeze at my feet on my dining room table. <laughs> well, anytime the wind blew, the wind was blowing right through there. Cause no matter how good your Concord guy is, it's not perfectly flat across there. Right. Then I moved to some caulking details, which are better than nothing. But what you've done here means that not only uh, will water not get in there, air's not gonna get in and where air can't get in, you're not gonna have bugs in as well. So right. the cockroaches that are super common in Texas houses, I suspect one of the biggest infiltration places for cockroaches in houses is right here. Yep. And if you told your clients, hey, I could give you a detail that will eliminate 99% of the cockroaches that are getting in, not, not 100%, because there's always gonna be one that's gonna get through <laughs> somewhere uh, at some point, but this is gonna reduce the need for them to use chemicals on the outside of their foundation to keep that mm -hmm. barrier uh, away because you put a physical barrier for the lifetime of the house. So when we talk air sealing, remember, talk to your clients about bug sealing as well. Good stuff, Scott. Yep. Should we uh, go sure. to the back of the house or you want to go inside? Um, wherever you want to go. <laughs> Man, this looks great. Look at these pipe details. Scott, it looks like I've got two tapes going on here. What's going on here with this penetration? I had to look at it because I have different guys working here. But normally what I'm doing is I'm, I'm putting a uh, stretch tape on the bottom, I do it in two pieces because mm -hmm. it's just easier, I Smart. think. Yep. Um, I do go with the bottom and then the top so it's overlapping. But then I like to cover the stretch tape with the zip tape. Uh, that's just been a common practice in our business. I think that's a great way to go. Uh, just to kind of get that, you know, feels a little bit more secure to us. Same thing with your wire too, exactly. right? We've got a little bit of that flexible tape, then we've got the uh, flashing tape. Right. Uh, and then talk to me about your hose bib back here. Okay, so um, you, you saw that I have the aqua hose bib. Mm -hmm. I got one that I want to try it on this little building back here. Sweet. Um, they're expensive. Um, I'll tell you one of the ways that I stay within budget oftentimes is my wife is constantly um, holding me back and <laughs> kind of uh, keeping me in check. Yeah, I get that. And it, it's totally a system that. that works because, you know, without that, you know, being throttled, yep. um, I probably would be the type to go overboard. Yeah. So <laughs> instead of the $100 hose bib, this is the $20 version. Exactly. But this is right. also a frost free, meaning but, it's going to shut off into right. the wall cavity. So the valve is all the way inside the wall cavity mm -hmm. um, so that 
you know, it's within the conditioned space. I don't have to cover it in the winter time. And what's this wood that you're using? This is here? just a it's just cedar that okay. we that so we like sealed. A, so it's like um, a four by six cedar post that you right. bought and just made a bunch of mounting blocks out of. Yep. Super smart. And obviously it's poking out because we're gonna have the the insulation um, and the rain screen plus the siding. So yeah. there's some thickness going on there. But I also had to make sure because this thing is six inches long. Mm -hmm had to make sure that that valve landed right in that cavity there. Yeah, that's really smart. I like that. And then he liquid flashed the top and he sealed it all. So now we don't have to worry about uh, water breaking down that cedar over time. That mounting block's gonna be there for at least 50 to 75 years for when you're ready to change your siding in 75 years. You should sign your name on that mounting block. <laughs> so the next builder someday knows what you're up to. How about we head inside, shall we? Oh, sure. we got a mock-up okay. going on. <clears throat> What do we have yeah, here, I mean, my I'll friends? tell you, um, you know, with our, with our jobs, so many of our jobs, again, being on budgets and everything, yep. um, we don't always have the, the luxury of time and money to have a big, thick book of fancy drawings. Sure, sure. Um, and so rather than, than all that, we show up and we figure this out on site and we experiment. Um, and so I showed up with my, my trim carpenter has been helping me with, with stuff like this. And we just started experimenting and trying to decide, you know, uh, when the ciders come, they come, it, it, it's a crew of like 10 guys mm -hmm. and they work fast. Yeah. Um, and they'll do a good job, but I've got to have this figured out before, before they, they show. Get here. I can't have 10 guys, <laughs> you know, standing behind me waiting right. for me to figure it out. No doubt. Now this is interesting. I don't see um, this very often. Okay. What, what's your thinking here? Well, this is at the advice of Joe Stebrick and uh, Christine Williams. Both promote this. Having a drainage plane behind um, your exterior foam. Th they recommend uh, something textured mm -hmm. so that it creates a little bit of gap behind there. And so I'm going with that recommendation. Okay. I'm using two inches, uh, but I'm doing one inch uh, sheets and I'm this will eventually be staggered seams is mm. the reason for that. Yep. And uh, is that because one inch is more available or less expensive than buying in a two inch? Or yeah, it was really because you really want to stagger those seams? I wanted to stagger the seams. Okay. I, at my house, <laughs> I just use two inch and I know that foam does yep. shrink. Yeah. But I figured it's such a little amount yeah. of uh, BTUs that it wasn't worth it. Right. Uh, but I could see one inch being more available to you. It, you know, yeah. It's off the shelf, so use it. Yep. Um, it was I the, like this detail. I did not do this at my house. I also have a different kind of overhang and bigger overhangs everywhere. Uh, but another option you could do instead of this is on the back of your sheet of foam, you could simply put a couple dabs of liquid flash mm -hmm. or even just a really thin bead of liquid flash. It actually doesn't even need to be liquid flash. It could be some cheap silicon caulk or uh, you know whatever you've got laying around just so that this has a couple of dimples on it, which would keep us off yeah. that zip with enough drainage plane that would do this. And then you'd right. save the expense of this product, which yeah. I don't think that you need personally. Well, yeah, yeah, I mean, I might end up doing something different. Um, before we, it's, about, it's raining Sorry, now, no, before we leave this spot, um, what you'll see here is that after the insulation is in, we do the, the, the seal tape, mm. right? Yep. That's just kind of like the pre-tape, but yeah. then yeah, we'll yeah. do the seal tape with a stretch so that um, water will drain on what I'm calling the drainage plane. Yeah. This is like yeah, yeah. primary water barrier, yep. but this is my drainage yep. plane here. It's exactly what I did in my house too. I love that detail, Scott. Oh, check it out. Scott's got a little show and tell for <laughs> us. I like it. Okay. All right, Scott, left to right. Give me the rundown. What do we got here? So this is just, um, it's an access door that you mud in. So it's completely flush with the sheetrock. I thought this was kind of a cool idea. So that is cool. I like that. So um, you can get easy access. So I can access. hide it. You know, it, it'll go behind like TVs um, just to hide the wires. So. I'm just trying to think of, you know, cool stuff like that to do. Where'd you find this? Um, it looks like you got shipped to you. Accessdoors.com, I okay. believe it gotcha. is. And is that an expensive door? Or no, a... no, um, it wasn't too expensive. So on my door pans, um, I always site build my door pans. Okay. Because in the past I found that I would order them. I got to get them from Austin if I order them. Mm -hmm. And I found that if they, if they arrive and it's a, if it's a 16th off, 
I can't use it. Right. It just doesn't fit. And that was a pain. It, then I had to wait. So I got into the habit of site building door pans and I've done it in a variety of ways. Mm -hmm. This is one I want to try. I saw this actually at the builder show in Vegas. Yeah, brand new from these guys this um, year. But Preformed corners. the thing, this is um, rated or whatever to stick to concrete. Mm -hmm. So that's what I like about it. Just like the, the SIGA tape that we're yeah. used to seeing, this also sticks to concrete. And this is Rissan? Yes. Yeah. And they just started selling it. Cool. Um, but I like this because I'll be, these are kind of big. I'll have to trim this to work. Yep. But this would go after I've get, got the seal, put this here, mm -hmm. and then flash it. Smart. On the back side of the door, I'm using like usually the Prosico liquid flash as the back dam of yep. that. Yeah, smart. I like that a lot. That's now, cool. in my personal house, I'm trying to do things kind of cool, trying to find some interesting things to do. What I want to do in this main living and like kitchen area is have a lot of things that are flush. Um, and Check I, this out, I've never seen that before. Yeah, That's really neat. There's several different companies that make these. Huh. Some of them are, are like 150 bucks for one outlet. <laughs> and, and I knew that wasn't going to fly. That's not going to work in the Scott True <laughs> so, world of the Scott that I know. I have uh, somebody that's kind of in the background um, saying no. Like I said, throttling, <laughs> that kind of stuff. But I finally found this one. This one's like, an, th they send you a sample. Huh. Um, this was, I think I got this for free. They just wow. send a sample, you know. That way you can get to know their product. Cool product. Now that's something different. Oh, it's different. Okay. Um, so this is Design Mod. Yeah. Is it Design a Mod. What's cool about this is like huh. I believe it's like twenty bucks per outlet. It's not bad so at all. So it's really affordable. And you're using a regular. This is know. what it shows. So you end up with a flush um, outlet that's or, really nice. or switch or whatever. I like that. Um, How cool. Design mod. I have to Google them. We'll put. We'll try and put a link in the description for that one. Oh, there it is. Okay. It's a. Mu it's mud in. Mud in. Yeah. Gotcha. This one's temporary. You take it off after Throw the mess, away. and then they give Throw you a final away. one. Yep. Gotcha. Now then, these uh, ones, real quick. This is kind of the opposite. It actually bumps out. Oh, interesting. Now the the idea is, you know, I hate when we do a tile backsplash oh, right. <laughs> and the plates never fit perfectly uh -huh. on the tile, just annoys me. So I've got these ones that bump out and they tile up to it. So they'll, they'll just tile That's up really to smart. it. That's really smart. And then the plate, before. yeah, so. Who makes this? Oh. I've never seen, I don't see a brand name we'll on have here. To, we'll have to put a link to yeah, that. Yeah, we'll put a link to that one. <laughs> cool. <laughs> and then you got an ear of you going in the house too, obviously, tight house. Uh, so we got to bring some fresh air in. Right. Uh, I mean, building tight, uh, an ERV is pretty much a must. Yeah, for sure. Um, and I've seen you use Brone before too, right? This is not your first Brone install. It's my first Brone ERV. I've used Brone other products, like I've used their dampers a lot. Okay. Um, in the past, I've used a lot of Fantech ERVs, which mm -hmm. are a good product, um, budget friendly. Um, but th these ones are almost the same cost. I did a video on this. This right. has some pretty sweet commissioning exactly. as this well. This one is the AI series, um, and I probably will be switching to this series on a lot of the homes. Um, I never say anything for sure because, you know, sometimes it makes sense to use something else. And then tell me uh, about controls for this thing. Uh, so, what are you using to control it? Yeah, this so is this is going to take one, place of your bath fans too, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. So. Um, this is exhausting, as you know, your viewers, you know, uh, we talk about this all the time. This kind of a system exhausts 24 seven mm -hmm. at a low speed. Yep. The buttons in the bathrooms uh, make it go in boost mode for whatever time you set it for. Yeah, 20 um, minutes, let's say. I'm gonna have these in some locations, but I'm gonna be incorporating uh, Brone's Overture system. Ooh. Um, the Overture system is kind of a smart, um, system where like in the uh, button in the uh, the bathrooms the buttons can sense the humidity oh, that's nice. it'll turn it turn it on by itself and then they have these really cool square that sit flush on the wall you put in the bedrooms mm -hmm. they don't 
have them on the website yet. They had them at the show. Okay. Um, International Builder Show. But those can sense other things. I've got to learn more about it. Like, like CO2. CO2 or, levels. Ah. Yeah. And those can also communicate and kick this on. So I'm, That's pretty neat. Yeah, I like... I think that'll be kind of cool to incorporate these automated things. Yeah, Brown makes some really good budget-friendly ERVs. And then this is that aqua hose bib that you yep. were talking about. Super slick, black, uh, you know, they even have their own teak mounting blocks. Right. Uh, not always the most budget-friendly, but man, are they really nice. So They're, this is going on my little shed slash office back there. But this is so that I can see the product. Uh, when I have clients ask me about it, I can say, hey, I've got one, come and look at it. Check out that mounting block too. They've even pre-drilled on this teak mounting block that's ready to go for your aqua so that you don't have to pre-drill it. It's ready to mount right on there. And then this is his black uh, cover that gets installed as well. So what you'll see is this black cover on the wall and that's it. That's pretty nice. They've been uh, longtime friends of the build show right there. Um, other than that, on this table, I've got the, uh, the Fast Flash Argart. I like the Prosico. I think this is a good quality product. Yeah, it is. And it happens to be a lot cheaper than zip flashing. Oh, really? Interesting. So you find it a little bit lower price. Probably that's quite also a bit, actually. because this is sausage tubed. And so you got to get a sausage gun but yet there's basically no waste. There's no cartridge to throw away here, which is really nice. Mm -hmm. And I also noticed you have air dam too. Yep, this is the air dam. Um, I wanted to try it on the windows. Um, more often than not, we're using big stretch on the back, on the back of the window to mm -hmm. complete that air barrier. Yep. That's a great way to go. I wanted to try this because I'm constantly looking for what's gonna be fastest and easiest to do. Yeah. Um, if this proves faster and easier, I might use it. It might actually be more cost effective to use Air Dam than Big Stretch, but they're both great products. And what we're talking about is Scott's done on, on this window there here. You go. Scott's done a great job of bringing his zip tape into the jam on all four sides, so we've got good continuity. And if that window were to fail and leak, it's going to only hit zip tape, so there's nothing to to have a problem. And then he's going to back cock on all four sides here, either with the Prosco Air Dam or with the um, Sashco Big Stretch. And now, if this window leaks, it'll leak to the outside, and frankly, no one will ever know. And if no one ever yep. knows it leaks, is it really a leak? No, it's not. Uh, so you've really given both yourself and your homeowner and your house uh, a really long-lasting durable install on this window. And I also love the fact that you're getting really <laughs> tight uh, blower door numbers with frankly very off the shelf windows. You want to talk about that for a minute? <laughs> yeah, well, I told you this is kind of a mix of budget items and some things were going above and beyond. Yeah. Well, this is one of the budget items, the windows. Um, I mean, we have had a lot of success with these. Uh -huh. I mean, of course, if you're going to spend more money, you're going to get a better product, of sure, course. Sure. But I will tell you that we have gotten performance out of these windows. Uh, That's my, awesome. The house that I live in right now, I told you before, it's 0.5 ACH 50 Dang. with these windows. How about that? Just good caulking yeah. and a good install, right? If it's yeah. if you're out of plumb and you know if the window is bent when you're installing mm -hmm. it, you may have some openings where the yep. air leaks in. So and I've also install. in the last house we remember we talked about he eliminated more costly and frankly sometimes more leaky sliding doors or you know the the lower the cost when it comes to the sliding door, the more leaky. So you've got swing doors where you can use good components and Dura sills and multi-point locks. Those are going to seal really well, so we've eliminated that. That's really mm -hmm. smart. Good stuff, man. Talk to me about uh, your attic uh, in your AC system, because I'm, I'm noticing you've got what looks like to be two return grills for your HVAC system. Right. But what are the other two returns that I'm seeing, or are those... Okay. So the, the two big ones are the main, for the main return. Mm -hmm. um, I've got, one is for the makeup air kit for the range ah, hood. Gotcha. So the range hood um, is gonna be a remote blower. So it's kept quiet. I'll nice. have the blower up way up in the attic, maybe surrounded by rock wool or something to even further dampen the sound. Love it. Um, because you know, when it's quiet, people use it. Yeah, that's <laughs> right, great point. When it's quiet, people use it. Um, but yeah, that, that'll be sucking, I think, up to 750 CFM out. Okay. Um, and then 
The Makeup Air Kit can match the CFM no matter what setting you're at. Nice. Um, and which which model are you using for that? Do you know? Or Fantech. Which brand? Fantech. Okay. Oh, the the Makeup Air. Yeah, the Makeup Air. That's Fantech. Yeah, that's what I use in my house too. It's right. a great one. I mean, it also has a filter in it, which right. is nice. Filter, a silencer. Mm -hmm. They make a good product. They for make that, a really for good that. product. Yeah. Um, for sure. So then that Makeup Air is going to come in here. It's close to the kitchen. Right. But also, if your furnace was on, it would probably get sucked right up into your return and get conditioned. So even yep. if it's makeup air that's coming at 95 degrees on a hot summer day, that's the idea. It's going to get sucked right in the AC. You don't want it to blow on people mm -hmm. because it's uncomfortable. You want it to be relatively close to the source. Smart. And in this case, I've got it next to the return so it can um, get conditioned. Love it. And you're right here in a big hallway space, right? so it's no big deal. All right, Scott, what's the last one then over here? What is this guy? Is that return or supply or what? So it's really a transfer grill because it's serving as the return for the attic. Um, what I want to say about that is, okay, we you have high performance homes, we always condition the attics. Yep. Um, I do see, I, I see some builders doing that kind of by accident uh, with either leaky ducts or poking holes in plenums. And I think that probably could work to an extent. Um, what I prefer to do, I prefer to calculate everything. Um, so we treat this as a room in the manual J. Mm -hmm. It's a room. We do a 3D model, calculate the volume, and then we understand exactly how many CFMs we need. In this case, this attic kind of goes diagonally. Um, so I've got, it's two six inch ducts for supply. I've got one on that corner, one on that corner, and then to promote that air airflow, that's why they're separated. And then I've got the return here. So you actually have two supplies in the attic at mm -hmm. kind of the far ends, and then this is the return. So that air is gonna, gonna basically flow through the attic, it's all open, uh, and keep that attic at a nice, right. uh, you know, cool, now, couple degrees hotter than the house, and that's it. If I would have connected like directly it. to the return in the attic, we calculated that it would have pulled too much. Mm. So we chose to transfer it here, um, where the return can passively um, Yeah, so just like a door would space. have a transfer grill on it, uh, exactly. you know, on either side, that's pretty much what you've done there. Yep. That's really smart, man. Dude, this is such a good tour. I'm slightly short on time, so I don't think I can get everything. <laughs> but uh, what else did you want to show me before we uh, okay, yeah, wrap there, the video? Unfortunately, there's a there's more to cover than we have time for. But that's maybe we'll have to that's come okay. back. Maybe we'll have to come back. <laughs> um, what I will point out, though, is in this house we have a dehumidifier. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes we don't on the more budget-friendly homes. Yep. And there are ways to make that work. That's maybe a different discussion there. Um, now, what I have here is, I have an interesting uh, makeup air solution for the dryer that's Ooh. connected to the dehumidifier. Oh, I wanna hear about that. Okay, so the, the whole issue with the dryer, you know, it's not sucking that much CFM out of the house, mm -hmm. but it's doing it for a long period of time. Right. Um, and because of that, if you have a, a tight house, that air is gonna be made up somewhere at the path of least resistance. Sure. Um, in one of my homes, Corbett put a video out. Um, I don't know if you talking about Corbett Lunsford, right? Uh, where I had a, an issue actually, and we and he helped me diagnose it. He has a whole video about that. Oh, cool! What was happening? It, that path of least resistance was through the doors. I had that hot, humid air coming in and uh, condensing on the floor, and so we did a whole diagnosis to confirm that that was the issue, and it, <laughs> and it was. And was it the dryer that was causing it, or was it just everything in general? Um, it was the bath fans as well. Okay. Because this was before I had been using ERVs. I mean, ev now every home gets an ERV, right. but this was way back. Sure. So, um, but the dryer by itself would cause an issue. Interesting. Um, of okay, course, so, that's compounded with other things. So an option is heat pump dryer, like right. I did at my house, which, which I, there's not that many of them out there. Which I we use might Mila, do. but there's only maybe two or three others. Yep. But if you don't do that, what's the other option? Or what, what did you come up with? I'm excited. Okay, I'll tell you I what I no came up what with. I what he's going to tell me. Um, there, there's actually kind of two solutions here because it's sort of an experiment. Do we need to go up, by the way? Uh, not necessarily. Okay. But right here, one of these is the return for the dehumidifier. Okay. And the supply is using the existing ductwork. Okay. 
by the way, the, e, the ERV also uses the existing ductwork nice. uh, for supply as well. That's a, a way to keep costs down. Yeah, that's smart. Um, rather than having a, a whole lot of ductwork going on. Um, okay, so I've got the return. One of these is the return. The other one is a damper. The other one is connected to a damper that um, I can switch on literally with a switch right here. Ah. So when I run the dryer, I can switch that on, opens up. It's a big enough damper where I think it's gonna allow enough air to pass. It's like an eight inch in. damper or something? 10 actually. 10, perfect. Because when it's passive, you need to go bigger. Right. I mean, fan forced, obviously you don't need to. Even though his dryer what? exhaust is four inch, uh, his passive vent is 10 inch, which is really smart because if you did a four inch and a four inch, like you might think, there's not enough uh, suction there's not enough uh, right. water column because to actually move enough air out of there one's using some kind of force and the other one's not so right. it's not equivalent it's really smart scott but rather than that dumping somewhere and just accumulating i've got it next to the dehumidifier return so mm -hmm. that it can be dehumidified right away i love it that was actually the secondary solution the the what i really liked is you know the dehumidifier has that extra part for mm -hmm. Ventilating. Makeup air? Uh, well, it's for- it's, Or not makeup air, the, sorry, for ventilation. Right. Fresh air. Fresh air, say. right. Now, normally I would not use that port. Yep. Because I've got the ERV. ERV doing it. The yeah. ERV is doing yeah. that for me. Um, but actually Corbett mentioned this and I was thinking about it. And he said, why don't you um, bring the makeup air into that? Um, Smart. I just could be that was, that's an excellent idea. That's a great idea. The only, the only problem is we did a calculation. We don't think it's going to be quite enough. Mm. Um, if it was, that would be perfect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that's why I have the secondary, so we can test and see. And um, but I'm I'm excited to have a solution for this because there's other appliances like a central vac, for example. Maybe that's not a problem depending on what kind of system it is, but. There's times where you've got to figure out makeup air for something. A tight house like this, anything over 100 CFM, I think you need to think about makeup. Uh, and I think that's a really smart idea. Scott, I hate to say it, I got to run. I got another <laughs> meeting. Unfortunately, I got to get to. But man, it is so good to see you. We need to make yep. a plan to come back. In the meantime, go follow Scott, Scott True Builds uh, on Instagram. Uh, and we also mentioned uh, our mutual friend, Corbett Lunsford, that you've made a bunch of videos with. Corbett mm -hmm. has an amazing uh, YouTube channel. He's got a PBS series. I'll link to a couple of those in the description below. Really, Definitely. really smart building scientist. And he did all, all of Scott's manual J's as well. So uh, shout out to our friend Corbett uh, yep, yeah, as He well. does consulting to help figure a lot of this stuff out. He's a smart, yep. smart guy who's doing great work. Guys, if you're not currently a subscriber, hit that subscribe button below. And oh, by the way, sign up for our newsletter because on buildshownetwork.com, we've got like 12 new videos a week. And that newsletter that we'll send on Tuesday and Fridays to you will tell you what's new on the site. Follow us both on Instagram or TikTok. <laughs> Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show. All right, guys, I want to introduce you to my friend, Scott Key, who is a former builder and the inventor of this product called Emergency Floor. Scott, what are we looking at here? So uh, what you're looking at is, is the first product of my nonprofit, uh, Every Shelter. Emergency Floor is a modular uh, insulated uh, flooring system that goes into refugee shelters. Ah, so this is the floor for a refugee tent, basically, right? That's right, yeah. And the Build Show has partnered with everyshelter.org uh, to help refugees specifically uh, after the event that happened in Turkey. Uh, as you know, a ton of buildings came down in Turkey, and I feel honestly a little responsible as a builder. Uh, if you've been watching the news, they're saying that there's like, 150 or so builders that have been arrested for not building to standard, not building to code. You know, this is an earthquake prone zone and a ton of those buildings that came down, they assume because the construction wasn't up to the standard. Talk to me about this floor and how this could change the life of somebody who's living in a refugee tent. Yeah, I think one of the misconceptions people often have is the duration of time that somebody will live in a temporary temporary shelter. Mm -hmm. Globally, a, a refugee is displaced for about 20 years. Wow. And so, um, you know, there are variable forces that, that 
you know, mean that you're building with what you might think of as temporary materials, but they really need to last for quite a long time. Yeah. Um, and so a floor like this is able to retrofit really any shelter. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's it's installed by first time users. I've, I've literally seen five year olds uh, install those floors. It, it has to be simple. Nothing to it. But families can actually take it with them to the next place uh, and, and often do. So we've been doing this for about eight years. Um, in this region, and uh, we know the product well, we know the impact, we know that it really makes a difference for families. And your nonprofit that you founded actually has a factory in Turkey making these panels. These are, uh, you probably know the meters on these, but these look like a two foot by three foot panel. About right. What is the material, and and uh, is this have some R value to it? Yeah, so uh, it, it is about half a square meter. Uh, the, the, the material itself is expanded polypropylene. Um, so it acts a lot like a plastic from a sanitary standpoint. It can be cleaned, it's cleanable, um, but then it also has that dual purpose of acting like an insulation, um, which is really important in this area because as we all know now, uh, it gets very cold there and it freezes in the wintertime. Yeah. And so um, expanded polypropylene is a really great, uh, it's a really great application for that. And we're actually able to injection mold it and make it very rapidly. And so we're already running the tool really, literally as we speak, uh, 24 hours. Uh, and we're making as many floors in this region as we can to help as many families as we can. That's pretty amazing. And of course, the need is more than just what's happening in Turkey right now. But uh, I thought this was a great time for us to partner with EveryShelter.org. If you're watching this, you're a part of the Build Show family, we'd love to have you consider donating. I think uh, a floor like this to cover one tent runs, what, 150 bucks, right? That's right. Uh, and the Build Show has said, look, we think as a team we can raise $50,000. So I would ask you, if you're watching this, please consider donating. Consider donating $150. That would make a huge difference in one family's life uh, in Turkey, in Syria, in Uganda, uh, in any one of these places around the world that every shelter is working right now. This is an amazing organization. And I think that making this difference in a family's life is not just giving them a meal or giving them something that's gonna help them short term, but this is gonna be in their temporary shelter which is not really that temporary for maybe a decade or two decades. This is really good work that you guys are doing, Scott. Appreciate it. Guys, we've got a Build Show landing page on everyshelter.org where you can place your donation. We'd love to raise $50,000 total. I think that's totally doable. And if you personally watching this would consider donating $150, that's gonna help one refugee family for at least a solid decade. This is a really big deal. You're really helping your brothers and sisters out uh, in a major emergency time in their lives.